Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Wednesday morning, November 10th, 2021. The man they call me that, and aloha to Matthew Thomas. I would call you the Mots, the man on the street, but you're more like the man on the island, the M-O-T-I. That doesn't work. Come up with a new nickname. Well, Motty, you can, you can call me Motty. Well, aloha and uh, in Muhalan Drive to you, Meathead. I think that's what, uh, Mahalo. I guess, Mahalo. yeah, well, I guess Muhalan Drive is somewhere around here. Everybody's saying it. I haven't found it yet, but... Uh, but yeah, no, I am out here in Hawaii just having myself a, a big time. Yesterday, I actually watched NXT on the beach. That tells you how big of a dedicated journalist I am. Watched NXT on the beach here in Maui. Hey, I got to ask. So you're in Maui, and uh, you know, you've been sending random pictures to Linda and myself, which is fine. I mean, we love it. But you said you saw a member of the AEW roster there. Did he have his Glock with him? Oh, no, he didn't. But uh, probably is probably in his boot or something. Yeah. You know, I I need to uh, see if I can run across him again and just flash up the what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk by him. I mean, he's an underground tourist, right? I have not, not that's some other dude, but I'm, I'm not sure it's him. But I think next time I, I walk by him, I'm going to just flash up the four fingers and see what his reaction is. Huh? There you huh? Go. There you go. All right. Well, who is sponsoring your trip to Hawaii and our program? Oh, uh, Collar and Elbow. Uh, available at CollarAndElbowBrand.com. And you can actually get your very own Collar and Elbow Brand Hawaiian shirt uh, available exclusively on their website. If you're planning on taking a trip to Hawaii, you just, you just want to sport it, make every day feel like uh, you're in Hawaii, head on over to CollarAndElbowBrand.com. Enter promo code Linda K, L-I-N-D-A-K-A-Y. Save yourself 10%. And uh, you can take that money and maybe buy you some Hawaiian macadamia nuts. You know what? I love my King Hawaiians rolls, you know, the mm -hmm. butter rolls. Amazing. Yeah. Well, what I've run across here is actually, you know, stateside macadamia nuts are, uh, you know, pretty expensive. They're much more reasonable here because I guess you're uh, you're closer to uh, the, the trees that have mac <laughs> macadamia. So here's the thing. I'm thinking about, you know, starting maybe some kind of racket where I buy a bunch of these uh, nuts and take them stateside. So, uh, matter of fact, it's probably worth getting an additional you know, suitcase to check and pack it full of just macadamia nuts. So, uh, anybody <laughs> in need of any macadamia nuts, uh, you know, tweet the real M. Thomas or at WCW Meathead, and uh, we can we can see about uh, what yeah, kind of deal worried, we can I'm work. I'm going to get a tweet that says, "Yeah, I'm looking for these nuts." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm not. I don't want it. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's some talks that you know, macadamia nuts might actually be uh, the first nuts available in the United States uh, that you can actually purchase with Thomas Tender. Good grief! <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about the news. I wanted to open with this, you know, and we were talking off air before we started, and I laid out what I, you know, had for news, and you know, I hadn't got to this one yet, but you mentioned it. You read the entire article. I read snips of it, but I want to talk about it. We we mentioned the promo uh, on Monday morning between Kingston and CM Punk, and how it was real, how it was, you know, we needed to feel it. How you know Eddie's opened up about his his issues. He's mentioned he's on so I mean, all of the stuff. Well. Eddie Kingston is the latest AEW star to open up uh, and pen a piece for the Players Tribune where he discusses his previous mental health problems as well as drug and alcohol abuse. I'm going to give you just a quick sn uh, snip of this. This is a quote from Eddie. I have been everything in this life. I've been an angry kid. I've been a depressed teenager. I've been an addict. I've been, and, you know, I've seen so many holding cells that would make your head spin. I've messed up and self-destructed and burned bridges. I've been down to my last dollar. The only reason I'm still doing this and the only reason I'm selling this earth is because of all the friends who have never stopped having my back. <coughs> Eddie Kingston, when he got brought in, uh, end quote, by the way, when he got brought into AEW, this was legit. He was brought in on a trial basis. It was an open challenge. Remember, he challenged Cody Rhodes for the TNT championship and uh, he didn't have a contract. And, you know, when COVID-19 hit, you know, and the guys weren't able to go out there and work. Uh, Eddie was down to the point where he was selling off his boots, his personal items, just to make mortgage payments. And then, you know, he caught Cody's eye. He impressed on there. And he's honestly, I consider Eddie Kingston a main event player since. Matthew, your thoughts? You read the whole thing uh, on this article and the openness of Eddie Kingston. No, absolutely. And I, I'm going to go on record and say this is a signed reading now for anybody listening to this podcast. It's that good of an article and it's that well written, you know. 
Eddie Kingston can put a pen to paper or a finger to keyboard or yeah. uh, whatever instrument he was using to to author this. Uh, an absolute great, great article. And I think Eddie Kingston is quickly becoming probably the fan favorite in that company to a point that I mean, I think that I think you're looking at a future AEW world champion. I we really, had a, a small spoiler off air uh, uh, of what you think might happen at Full Gear. You feel this might be an Eddie Kingston night. Absolutely, this is this is Kingston's match to win. And, and if you look at it on paper, I, I mean, what more accolades does it, how, CM Punk's going to have to lose at some point? Brian Danielson's going to have to lose at some point. And I think this is where Punk gets his first loss because a Kingston win here is everything to the career of an Eddie hey, Kingston. Wait, uh, Eddie's on my team. That's a that's a win for the team. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is, man. Uh, my goodness. And uh, it's, yeah, I, I think that, and it's not, and the interesting thing is, yeah, I mean, I know they know what they're doing with the promos and whatnot, but, I mean, honestly, the more that you are hearing about his story and that you are, you know, hearing the struggles this guy's been through, that is a fan favorite. I mean, this the whole story about where he was at when he premiered, and, and the article goes more into detail with it, where, I mean, you know, to, to take a few bullet points from it, you know, he was after a payday. You know, he didn't really care about creative. He didn't care what they were doing with him. When they brought him in, I mean, he was he was there for the check because he had bills to pay and he was trying not to lose his home. Um, you know, it's one of the best stories, the kind of the best underdog come from behind stories in professional wrestling in, in recent memory. Everybody go check out this article. And uh, I'm really hoping Eddie Kingston beats CM Punk on Saturday night. Amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. Again, he's becoming um Relatively fast. One of my favorite people in AEW as well, yeah. because, again, this dude is, uh, you know, he even mentions real quick in his promo, yeah, I'm a little tubby, yeah, I'm a little what, but I'll knock your teeth out. You know, this dude's a street fighter. I mean, you know, they have the, and we'll get into NXT in just a little bit here in that triple threat, but, you know, they call him a, a street champion from the islands, uh, solo, you know, from NXT. This is AEW's street guy. I mean, formerly a member of LAX. Eddie Kingston is uh he's the real deal. So well, hey, you and uh you and Linda discussed it a little bit, but you know, you and I haven't gotten to talk about it, but that promo from Friday night, he turned oh. that crowd. I mean, that that there were significant Eddie chants in that crowd. Um you know, I mean, that was when you get CM Punk on the mic, I mean, CM Punk is still rotting high on that wave of one of if not the biggest pop in the history of professional wrestling. And it's to have pop. yes. And to have somebody be able to turn a crowd, I'm not going to say against uh, CM Punk, but Eddie was was your favorite in that promo. Wow. OK. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to another thing. Uh, up, up, down, down. Did you ever watch? Uh, I can't say that uh, I can't say that I did. I know of it. I know that it exists yeah. and it's a thing. But I can't yeah, say that I definitely, watched. definitely a fan favorite on YouTube for WWE, uh, along with uh, Xavier Woods. You know, Up, Up, Down, Down has got 2.27 million subscribers, and they've ha had their videos watched over 411 million times. But uh, um, WWE owns the channel, right? And I don't know if he's just not getting paid, but the people that are helping create the content – have uh, in solidarity stop putting content up there because they think that Kof or uh, Xavier's not getting paid enough. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah, I I have not heard much on the Xavier contract situation. I mean, I, I know he's getting the most prominent push of his career, but I didn't know there was issue on the uh, on the the pay front. Who knows? I mean, think about the people that were on there: Adam Cole, <coughs> Tyler Breeze, and uh, Jesse Ann Duke. Uh, you know. Um, you know, all the different people that were on there, Mia Yim, you know, people that are no longer with the company. So was that, was George W. Bush on there? Oh, no, that was the undertaker. I'm sorry. He wasn't. Yes. Down there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, get I, I knew he was in the news with the wrestler. I just got it confused. Fair enough. Uh, one real quick note about Nia Jax as well. Um, Nia Jax was released during what she had asked for the company was a mental health break. Yeah. Again, you know, mental health is never, 
been not a serious thing, but it seems to have finally been recognized and finally being appreciated and uh, taken care of over the last handful of years. So uh, find it odd that they would cut her during yeah. the middle of it. Now she had, uh, there was plans for her to be back on TV right around now, mid November, but she had asked for a little bit more time away and then they cut her instead. So um, you can understand both points, right? Uh, Nia Jax uh, was supposed to come back to work. She said she didn't want to come back to work and WWE had to move on. I understand that. So, I mean, you know, there's really no yes or no or right or wrong in that one. Your thoughts on Nia Jackson being released during a mental health break. Yeah. I mean, that, that doesn't play very well. Um, it, it doesn't. And I know well, that I don't think they care about how it plays in the media. Right. Right. No. It, and I think, I think Nia Jax, you and Linda were talking a few days ago about where she'll end up. I think she'll end up with WWE uh, eventually. I mean, I think that's somebody that. I think that's the right call. Her coming yeah, back to yeah. the company. Yeah. So Let's just, uh, you know, hopefully she takes the time she needs and, yeah. you know, she's back sooner rather than later. Yeah. Let's talk uh, last night's NXT. Uh, we open up with a uh, six woman, excuse me, uh, tag team match. Yeah, it was six women. What am I thinking? Six woman tag match, toxic attraction, all the women's gold to get on Iwo Shirai, Casey Canton Zero and Caden Carter. In a six-woman tag, um, there was no doubt in my mind that Toxic Attraction was going to walk away with the victory in this one. Yeah, I know we can be kind of critical of NXT from week to week, but I think that, you know, I'll go on record as saying Toxic Attraction is one of the best stables in professional wrestling right now, male, female, uh, whatever. I think that is a very good look they've got. And, Mm -hmm. you know, with their NXT shows Andy needs to work on a microphone a little bit, and she's the leader of this group, and she needs to work on her uh, mic skills. Yeah, and I think she'll get there, but they've done a good job of opening up recent NXTs with them because it's the, the hottest thing they've got. Uh, absolutely right decision to have them go over, and that is a yeah. good visual. You know what, man? It's very reminiscent of uh, the bloodline there with yeah. all three members holding their gold. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're going to skip ahead to their promo outside in the parking lot. Um, Matthew, I don't know where on the beach you were watching NXT, if it was nice and quiet or he had like – Seagulls making noise, and you can hear this. Were they standing on bubble wrap the entire time? Uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I thought that was the uh, was the seagulls. Yeah, no, it's uh, and you know Raquel Gonzalez drove by on the motorcycle and then continued to drive into the ring. But while they're cutting their promo, I'm like, are they rocking back and forth on bubble wrap? Because the audio was just awful. You know, professional wrestling is one of the only places where you can drive your vehicle into, uh, you know, your working space. Yeah, if you try to do that, meet it probably wouldn't go. Could you imagine me riding my little spree, you know, uh, onto the elevator up to whatever floor, and then getting off at my cubicle? No, oh, I think it'd be fucking great. Oh, uh, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd hit the horn. Me, 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 me. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what you need to do. I mean, I know SNL did a sketch about Spectrum over the weekend on Saturday Night Live, um, but, uh, you know, they didn't mention anything about people riding in on sprees, so. Hey, I mean, there's uh, there's some material for you right there. All right, uh, Mackenzie Mitchell show backstage with Pete Dunn setting up uh, the issue with D'Angelo. Uh, Dunn and D'Angelo go back and forth. Here comes Trick Williams, and here comes Carmelo Hayes to set up the main event. It's going to be the North American champion Carmelo Hayes and Pete Dunn, the bruiserweight, in the main event. Uh, Kaylee Ray and Sarai. Kaylee Ray and Sarai. Uh, Now, Kaylee Ray walks through Toxic Attraction on the way to the ring. That's setting up something for the future. Remember, it was announced that there is a takeover coming, and this is War Games. Yeah, no, I was just trying to do the math there and see, you know, who's going to be feuding with you with who. And it is uh, it is going to be on Peacock. So it does uh, it does count, Uh, although I think most of us have kind of cleared a a lot of our NXT talent from the ranks. I don't think anybody has anything left except for maybe uh, I don't think any of us has anything. Nelson, Nelson, Matt Dallas still got uh, L.A. L.A. Knight for now. Yeah, for now. That's it. L.A. Knight's the only NXT talent left. I'm looking at the list right now. Well, I've got to keep him now just to give us some stakes, you know. Wow. L.A. Knight, the only NXT talent left. <sighs> My goodness. All right, but Kaylee Ray and Saray, or Saray, excuse me, Kaylee Ray with a win. Uh, KLR, as they're calling her, 
Joe Gacy's promo uh, talking about his match with Boa. Did you feel last night on NXT that they cut the entrances off? Like, I don't remember anybody getting a full entrance except for maybe Taka Contraction. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you choppy right. entrances. You might, you might be right. I mean, they've, they're trying to get as much in each week as they can, and maybe Which some is has got to go. Which is Raw and SmackDown are because, I mean, they're extending segments over two to three commercial breaks. 100%, yeah. Well, I, I still believe, and again, there was a, a side video package of Braun Breaker going over to Europe and wrestling with uh, some of the members of the SmackDown roster. I still believe that uh, NXT talents should come up to Raw or SmackDown and maybe get some matches there. And if they catch a win or something, maybe they get a chance at moving up to the top roster. But that would that would mean that WWE would have to admit that the NXT is a lower brand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think that there is, there is a lot to be gain from that because i mean right, right now more so than ever nxt does feel like its own little world in its own little bubble yeah all right boa and joe gacy uh winner by dq joe gacy your thoughts uh and i i think it works very well for uh for joe gacy because you know he was he was fine with it you know he was uh he was grinning at the end and you know, he was uh, I think that bodes very well to I think I think the character of Joe Gacy is fine to uh, to take a DQ win. The Creed brothers from the Diamond Mine take on. Oh, oh, my God. Uh, jacket time. Matthew, how do you feel about jacket time? Well, I, I, I like them uh, aesthetically. The promo made me feel a little uncomfortable, to, to be quite honest with you. I, I don't know if you caught this, but it was quintessentially yeah. like. I'm Japanese. You're Japanese. Uh, it it felt odd, man. Um, it's better it, than the promo in the urinals where nobody was washing hands. I mean, but but that's that's based on real life. Yikes. Well, Jacket Time takes on the Creed Brothers. I thought this was a match for Jacket Time with that big entrance. No, no, no. The Diamond Mine gets the Creed Brothers the victory. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it, it could have gone either way. I don't think Jacket Time is unfortunately a tag team that really needs to get a lot of wins. I mean, that's what you uh, you have when you have somebody kind of booked like them. And uh, maybe yeah. you know, I'm surprised they did a lot of wrestling because maybe they still had the pee in their hands and hadn't washed their hands yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's quite possible. Um, you know, they they just need a segment with them around that urinal trough, not the actual yeah. individual urinals, because that's that's really where they. Cool. The, the urinal trough is where the action's at. All right. So uh, in the ring, after that segment we talked about with Toxic Attraction, and it's Raquel Gonzalez uh, in the ring, and she says that Mandy Rose is just keeping her title warm, but she calls out Dakota Kai. Now, something's going on with Dakota Kai. She's all creepy and kind of weird. I mean, maybe it's because she got hit with the shovel at Halloween Havoc and uh, watched her lay motionless. I don't know where. Here comes Cora Jade attacking uh, Dakota Kai. Now, Raquel Gonzalez... I don't know if she's teaming with Jade. I assume they're building a team for War Games. Yeah, no, that's probably the most direction, the most likely place this thing's going. And, uh, yeah, you'll probably see a lot of people teaming in multiple uh, groups now since War Games yeah. right around the corner. Kind of like, you know, when they're around TLC or something like that, when people get an obsession with, uh, you know, tables, Kendall's ladders, and chairs. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have no obsession with Chase University. I don't oh. even want to spend time on it. Yeah, you know what? It's I, I kind of in, I kind of enjoy him. I think it was a nice learning experience. I mean, it's almost like the grizzled young veterans learn how to steal people's, uh, you know, Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah, no, that was uh, all in the name of of distracting a referee. Um, you know, so I mean, a lot of people use Uber Eats or Grubhub or who's somebody else that's not paying us? DoorDash. With DoorDash. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot. Actually, I, I used Instacart yesterday. You know, that's another yeah. service that's out there. And uh, there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, opportunities in this gig economy for you to practice distracting a referee. If you can distract a complete stranger, you can distract a referee and then steal his um, hot wings. All right. Uh, Cameron Grimes gets a match against Ru Fang. And, of course, he wins. He took it to the moon. Uh, Cameron Grimes had not wrestling a lot lately, so good to see him in the ring. But uh, the first spot he pulled after the match started goes, you can kiss my grits. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron Grimes. All right. 
there's a match next week, but it's not a match. It's a poker game in the ring live. <laughs> and it's part of my brain that just despises that. And then a part of me that really, really likes it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know that I know that NXT crowd is going to be pumped for a poker game. Yikes. You know what? That is the one key takeaway, though. OK, so you've got, you know, a very tight uh, audience there and, and a very amplified audience. So the reaction to be honest, to folks, game, when think, we talk about Blizzard Brawl, Blizzard Brawl is about three times the size of that audience. Yeah. Yeah. Does Dave, does, has Dave booked a poker game? No, I don't think Dave has ever booked a poker. I've been to every Blizzard Brawl, but one, Dave has never had poker in the ring. You know what? Maybe, maybe I can play. Maybe you and I can play each other in poker. I need to. I need to learn how to play poker. Or so, myself. in a side dark match, we're going to play pinochle in the ring. <laughs> you know what? Let's let's do that. I think we need to have. That's kind of like the side attraction. Is it's actually not a dark match, but it's going on throughout the entire event. You can always go over to our, our table where we're playing. You know, poker or Monopoly or Hungry Hungry Hippos or Operation or something like that. Yeah, or, or maybe they're just checking in on us. Yeah, yikes. All right, here was a match that I was surprised to see, and we don't get these set up a lot on any of the three brands, but a triple threat. Solo Sequoia, L.A. Knight, Grayson Waller. The winner is Solo Sequoia. I'm not mad at this at all. I just wish they were doing more with L.A. Knight, but I'm glad Solo gets the win. I am, but I think he and L.A. Knight should be completely out of each other's orbit because, uh, yep. it, you know, L.A. Knight, again, taking the pin here, man. Um yeah, so uh, you know, good, good for him, but yeah, it just it continues to kind of baffle you uh, with the booking of LA Knight. All right, Erica Yang versus Electra Lopez. This match was goofy. Um, the starting bell got rang twice. Uh, Erica Yang ran after Electra Lopez before the bell rang, and then they rang the bell before the ref said ring the bell, and then the ref said ring the bell, and they rang it again, and then the. Uh, uh, it was a, a sit-down powerbomb in the middle of the ring for the pin. It was – there was something with this match. Yeah, but I think the you know the real fallout was the uh, the end there where it looks like love is in the air once again. Yeah, he, he did a tango on her, didn't he? Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's got some moves. And, and by the way, we're talking about um, Zion Quinn who was asked to join Legato Del Fantasma, and he said no, but uh, – you know, there's there's some sparks there. She was sweaty. He was excited. Things are there's things are popping. Absolutely, might, might have another uh, NXT wedding before too long. North American champion Carmelo Hayes taking up Pete Dunne for the main event, and Pete Dunne is the winner. Uh, the things to note here on commentary, and he didn't say a damn word. Dexter Loomis, which got the biggest pop of the night for me because. Loomis uh, literally showed up, slowly put on the headset, made sure the mic was by his mouth, but never said anything. And was the audience chanting speak when he came out there? I, I think thought that so. was was really cool. Uh, Loomis on con. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> as many missteps as, as NXT's taken recently, you got to give them credit for putting Loomis on con. Here's the other cool thing, too. On the other side, it wasn't a zombie or a walker. It was Johnny Gargano. Thumbs up from Johnny to Loomis, Loomis to Johnny. Like I said, they're building uh, War Games teams. And it's one of those low-key things that I like, the fact that Johnny started to, you know, come around to Loomis' character. Yeah, but they're coming around to each other with the women gone. So the way is done. It's just Johnny yeah. and uh, Gargano, or yeah. Johnny and uh, Loomis. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, you know, we hear we hear Indy mention him, but they're really keeping him and Indy separated on TV. Yeah. Well, Matthew, that is it. But I do want to mention one more thing. Uh, Blizzard Brawl. Uh, Matthew, you've heard the final announcements to Blizzard Brawl. Did you see that the number one referee from AEW will be on the program? Oh, my goodness. You got to you got to imagine that that's going to be some top notch officiating. We've got Linda refing a match and now Aubrey is going to be calling some of the action, man. You are not getting away with it. That's what we need to do. We need to play video games, Matthew, because Aubrey is a video game person. I got to tell you, anybody who's booked for Blizzard Brawl, don't think about bringing any foreign objects with you. Don't think about any distractions, man. It's not going to happen. That is going to be a tightly run ship. Ship with a P. All right. Mm -hmm. So for Matthew Thomas, 
the man they call Meathead. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Tomorrow, we won't be talking to Matthew Thomas. I think we're going to bring back in Linda Kay, and we will break down Dynamite, the go-home to the go-home Dynamite, that is, to full gear. So for Matthew, I'm Meathead. Uh, Meathead. I know what my name is. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone. <laughs>